Welcome to another episode of Open RCT2 Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build your very own wave pool, like this one shown here, and also how to add waves to your seaside parks. So if you want waves crashing against the shoreline, I'm going to show you how to do that. Here's a few examples from my cliffside park. So if you haven't seen that video, feel free to check it out and take a tour of Cliffside Park. But this is a very simple trick. However, it does involve a scenery object from the Time Twister expansion pack. So if you don't have the expansion pack, I suggest you purchase it. Now to start, we have to go to Object Selection, go to Scenery, and turn on Prehistoric Theming. And then we will go to the Scenery tab, and the Prehistoric Theming, we will find the Geyser Scenery object. Now this is an animated object, but we can't control the timing or the direction of these. So if you build a bunch of them, we can find out the direction they animate. They actually will always be animating towards the origin of your map. So that would be the one by one coordinates in the tile inspector. So you will need to orient your wave pool according to the animation. You can't really change anything. It's based on the map. So now I'm going to raise the land to where I want the water height to be. And in the tile inspector, I can see the base height of the surface is 12. And then the surface here is four. So that is where I want to place the geysers. I don't want it any lower than eight units beneath the water surface. And then I'm going to show you a little bit higher. So this is seven units below the water surface and then six units. So now when we raise the water, make sure disable clearance checks is turned on. Otherwise they all disappear. But now you can see that they are going to glitch. So to fix that, I'm going to redo this. And so in the tile inspector, our water surface height is 12. So I'm going to go eight beneath. So that would be four units for this one. And then the middle one is going to be at five units. So that is seven below. And then this one is six below. So that would be six. So now everything looks much better. And if you turn on water transparency, you can actually see some of the geysers beneath. So to fix that, you just need to raise the land one. There you go. Looks much better. Now you can see the three different heights of the waves that we have available. I'm going to put it on a loop now so the animations happen a little bit more quickly so you can see. But these are the three wave heights. I like to use all three of them for my wave pool, but you can just use one if you'd like. I'm going to quickly build the formwork for my wave pool. You can make your wave pool as large or as small as you'd like, but this is just kind of the basic shape a lot of wave pools take in real life, but you can build it however you'd like. Now the jagged edges will make sense now as I smooth them out. I'm using the Scenery Manager plugin, so if you don't have that plugin, the link is in the video description so you can download it. But now we just need to add the geysers. So in the deep end, I want the waves to be the largest. So in the tile inspector, I want the water height uh, or the surface of the water for this wave pool to actually be uh, two units below the land here. So that is at the base height 12. So I want these geysers to be six below the height, the 12 height. So they would be at base height six and then make sure to lower them beneath the surface. And then we can either copy and paste them using the tile inspector, or we can use that scenery manager plugin, which is much easier. So you'll select it, but you need to make sure that it's under raw for the place mode and that force order is turned to no. And then we are able to copy it and we can paste it. And then I can check in the tile inspector and it is pasting it correctly with the right order with the geysers beneath the surface. So I will quickly place all of those. Now for the next level, I'm going to place the geyser and in the tile inspector, I want this to be seven units beneath the water surface height. So 12 minus seven is five. Make sure it is below the surface. And then the scenery manager plugin, I will copy and paste all of these. So basically the waves are gonna be going from larger to smaller as they head towards the shallower end of the wave pool. And then now for the final row of geysers, I'm going to place another geyser here. And then in the tile inspector, I want this one to be eight units beneath the height of the water. So that would be at base height four. Make sure that it is beneath the surface in the tile inspector order. Then back into the scenery manager, I'm going to paste these. You can barely see them, but they're there. And I'm taking care not to place any geysers in the corners where the scenery objects are. 
And now that that's all done, make sure disable clearance checks is on, otherwise these will all disappear when you raise the land in the water. But I'm going to raise the land just above the geysers so you don't see most of them. And then now we can raise the water and the wave pool should be almost complete. And now I'm going to apply a wall texture from the original Roller Coaster Tycoon and it's looking pretty good. Now all we gotta do is add a way for peeps to ride it. So I'm going to use the flying saucers ride and I'm going to place it right here. And you want the entrance and exit to be as close to the edges as possible because you don't wanna have peeps walking on water as they're queuing in line. And I'm gonna make it so you can see those entrance and exit buildings. And here we have two more. Now, if we open them, it is going to populate them with what looks like little tubes. Now, if you have the arbitrary ride type changes cheat turned on, we can change them all to 3D theaters and that will make the platform disappear. So it makes it really easy to have the illusion that they're just floating on water. Now we're just going to add the queue lines and the exits so all the path work is there. And now here's something I forgot to do. I actually messed up when I was doing the edging. I want to actually make it so it looks more like steps coming up to the shallow end of the wave pool. So that's what I'm doing here. Just a little bit of scenery work and I think that's going to look much better. And then now I'm going to finish off with some pathing around the entire wave pool so it looks a little bit more like a water park and connecting all of our entrances and exits. And then now we can use the tile inspector to make the queue lines and exit paths invisible. Now, because we changed these to 3D theaters, the ride will operate without any guests, which we don't want. So if we go into the operating mode area, we can turn on the wait for full load, and that will make sure that the rides operate more like the normal flying saucer or Dodgem's ride, where they need a full load of guests to operate. So I think that looks pretty good. All we have to do is hide the entrance and exits, which you can do this way, or you can go and use the tile inspector and select the entrance and exit and make them invisible. And then that is all there is to it. We have a working wave pool and I think it looks pretty good. And because these are operating as 3D theaters, they are actually going to give you much better stats than the normal flying saucer ride. So if we look at the stats, they're pretty decent, but the ride vehicles are gonna show up as buildings, so you don't have to pay any mind to that. But now, moving on, I'm gonna show you how to create waves for your seaside park. Now, I like to break the lines of waves up, as you can see here, otherwise it looks like just one big line going across the screen, but it doesn't really matter. So to get started, I'm actually going to take this section and I'm gonna remove the current waves just to show you how to do it. So you can see them underneath here. This is what it basically looks like. So we have all of those waves there, but as I remove them, we will start from scratch. So it's the same principle as before. We're gonna take the geyser and we're gonna place it here. And then you're gonna open the tile inspector and we're going to make sure it's below the surface and then make sure you lower it to the appropriate base height that you would like. So I'm going to put that at two and then we can copy and paste it with the tile inspector and make a nice long row, however long you'd like it. And then once you have that done, we can then open the scenery manager up and we'll just copy the whole row. So when you select again, make sure that you have it in raw mode and that force orders to no, and make sure you deselect all of these items that you don't want. We just want small scenery and then we're going to select the row and copy and then we paste it but we're gonna move it over one so you just move it over one tile for each row like so and it's pretty simple and that will create your line of waves the only problem is when you get to a place like here at the end where the surface that I'm pasting with the scenery manager um, it's higher than the surface before so it's starting to raise the uh, the geysers that we're pasting so when you run into something like that you know you can just copy and paste it to the tile inspector. The same goes for when you get to the shoreline and it's jagged and there's a, you know, it's not a straight line. You can just paste it appropriately wherever you want the waves to end. And once you're finished with that, the only thing left to do is to raise the water surface back up. Now, if you like to use the transparent water view, 
you'll actually see the geyser sticking up a little bit. So to remedy this situation, you can actually change the texture of the surface so it blends in a little bit better. But if you like having the sandy surface texture or something lighter, another option is to just raise the land up two units so that the geysers are hidden. But that is all there is to it. And now you have your working waves. I think this is an awesome idea if you have a seaside park and you want to give it something extra. I was actually pretty happy with myself once I discovered this trick, so I hope you enjoy it as well. And to let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe because next time I'm going to be showing you how to build your very own Windseeker or Skyscreamer Starflyer model as you can see here, so stay tuned for more!